Hey guys. Back again, Carl Galler with Carl Galler Build. Another episode of Beach Buggy Builds. I think today's episode is going to be uh, a lot more of the same. I know this stuff kind of gets boring. I really try to condense, you know, four, five, six, seven hours down to about a half hour episode. How much grinding and welding can you, um, you know, can you really stand or you know, how much of it do you really need to see? But uh, my last episode, I had uh, kind of finished up um, at least tacking this all down. Today, I'm going to run um, some, try to fill up some of these voids, although I know I'm being a perfectionist because um, at the end of the day, I am going to have to do some, you know, some body work and use some Bondo a little bit to fill up some of these voids. So we're going to grind all this stuff down and uh, may try to figure out what we're going to do here with this hump. I've got a couple kind of ideas about this uh, tray area. I definitely, uh, at one point I went, actually went to the junkyard to find hoods that uh, would approximate this uh, bevel. But I don't think I'm going to need that. I think what I'm going to do is uh, take one of these big pieces of uh, 18 gauge um, sheet metal. That's a big ass piece right there. And uh, mold something. Uh, try to get some creative with uh, some sort of a... Um, you know extension of this profile here uh, It would be really cool to do kind of bullets back here um, But you know at the end of the day once again, I only have so much so much in the way of skills. So uh, We'll see what comes out anyway um, My phone it seems like it starts dinging as soon as I start um, uh, filming any particular episode. So that's a constant in the background. I've noticed of every one of my episodes is the dinging. So um, today is, uh, what is it? May the 5th or May the 6th. Uh, it is a um, Tuesday. So I think, it, well, I don't know exactly sure, but I want to give you an idea as to where we are. I started the build, you know, I guess probably in earnest, I started the build the last week prior to Christmas you know a little bit here a little bit there I was able to drive it up until uh, I ripped down the doors so even when I um, so the day that I took off the convertible top and ripped down the doors and all that good stuff I had to stop driving it but when I had the lift on it you can see I've got that four inch uh, Jeep lift that was on episode uh, two and episode three uh, I was able to drive it around. I really miss driving it around. It's like so much fun. I mean, we live in the land of uh, convertibles and the sunshine and the beaches, and it's just great to have a cool little buggy to drive around in. So hopefully, I'm hoping by the end of this month, which is May, uh, we've got something that at least it might not have a complete paint job on it, but at least it'll be drivable. So wish me luck. Rewelded this back in. I think it's respectable. Uh, we'll grind that down. I think I got in there really good. I got right in. By, be, by pulling out some of that extra material, grinding that off, I was able to uh, really get a good butt weld. I'm going to go search for a coat hang on, hanger and uh, do my best rendition of Bad Chad and fill up that gap. I put a couple welds into some of those voids to see if I can. Um, grind them down to be beautiful and I blew through right there and I was able to add a little bit of metal back. I am going to try another Bad Chad secret. This is a uh, metal a wire uh, clothes hanger. Uh, he doesn't say to, to, to uh, whatever sand it down I've never seen him do it before but I've gone ahead and I'm thinking that this coating on here might not be really great it might be a resin of some sort so I just sanded that down 
I'm going to try to lay this stuff in and uh, see if it helps fill up these gaps. It does fill up the gap. Let's see how it works out once I start grinding it. By my untrained eye, that looks pretty good. By the way, guys, there's this uh, splatter spray. It's really good to spray down on stuff. It was one of the first things I bought, one of the first things I paid attention to with these guys on YouTube who are uh, especially using the flux core. Um, the flux core uh, welders uh, because they tend to splatter way more than um, uh, MIG and TIG so uh, it makes it so you can just pretty much wipe down the splatter right off of the work surface but I'm looking at this lens cover and I'm hoping I haven't burnt it because I see some splatter on the lens I hope it's just dust I will check back with you moment here. Okay, this is where I am so far. I've been on it for a eh, better part of an hour, maybe a little bit more. Uh, definitely a process. You just have to keep doing over and over and over and over again. So I'm pretty solid here. Um, got some voids here, but I think it's all adhered. Adhered here. Um, Nothing's really moving here. Th this popped off again. You can see a slight Slight movement there, so I'm gonna Get some good welds in here back here. It's held pretty well. I Think I'm suffering over details that I really don't need to to to, to do um, the reality of it is is It's not a structural member. It's it's a piece of body work and uh, I could probably use some Bondo I guess one of the few discouraging things is, you know, unless you really know how metal reacts with to heat and you do it professionally, um, you learn what happens. So you can see all the, the waviness here. Um, and I'm just wondering if I can hit it with some heat or something like that uh, to maybe shrink up some areas. I'll do a little bit of, a little bit of research but I have no miss uh, kind of givings of it being um, perfection. But uh, I would also like it not to look like uh, it's made out of uh, Reynolds wrap with all the, the wrinkles in it. So I might just pound the shit out of it with a hammer when I'm done. So uh, I'm gonna be introducing a hell of a lot more heat into it down at, let's see if I can even see here. Yeah, so down along this bottom seam where it meets the top of the running board, uh, it's going to be all welded in. And this seam is going to be welded in. Why? Uh, because I just feel like it, once again, um, I guess it's the aesthetic that I'm hoping for. But I'd rather not have a whole bunch of body seams here that looks like I just welded up or screwed together some doors. I want it to actually look like a continuous... Uh, you know, whatever, piece of body. So that's where I am right now. I need to go to my favorite place, Harbor Freight, and uh, pick up some more, uh, f uh, whatever you call them, uh, flapper discs. Till then, wish me luck. So I'm getting ready to weld in the bottom of the door to, uh, to the rocker um, panel, AKA running board. I've got this 3 16 uh, rod stock here, which I've got measured out and should fit. Um, it's hard to do it one-handed, but anyway, it'll fit in there. I'll tack it on one side and then I'll work my way across. I've got the door screwed in at the bottom and uh, wedged out at the top to try to get this body line kind of somewhat good till I uh, weld it and then we can uh, once again do some more body work okay I've got the rod just tacked in here fills up that gap really really nicely I'll put a fill it in there 
should grind and even if we get a little bit of a radius in there it'll look nice all right got a piece of uh, the quarter inch rod stock over here filled up this gap really really nicely i had to put a slight curvature on the rod and uh here's my little they look like candy dots stuck to paper uh that's the 3 16 rod stock down here in the bottom and of course i'll put it a bunch more i just have it pretty much taxed, tacked up and uh so and then i'll put a 3 16 piece in here as well all right so i'm trying to figure out exactly what i'm going to do here so i'm mocking up some stuff some options with uh cardboard and i'm thinking it'd be really cool to build something contoured that comes back to here maybe a little bit ambitious but uh i'm going to try to do it with uh at least with sheet metal i mean excuse me with cardboard and uh if i can pull it off of cardboard then i can just take it all apart and cut the pieces with sheet metal weld them together and and lay it in here so give it a whirl so this is uh what i'm thinking about some teardrops they shrink down in the back what i might do is i just might do the pan first and then end the teardrop back here so i don't have to worry about tacking it right into this edge i'll just do like a round pan and then i will overlay it with these uh with the teardrops i'll take the pan, pan up to the middle here so uh, might give it a nice finish detail to it Playing around in cardboard is a lot easier than playing around with uh, sheet metal. Trying out some different shapes for the back of the beetle. Let's see what's the most pleasing. Easier to mock it up using cardboard than uh, sheet metal. This one will be more of a all-encompassing version. This one would give me a rounded shell here. Remember, this is uh, probably, I was going to say, equally parts of uh, utility and, uh, and looks, but no, there's very little utility about this vehicle, so it's going to be all about looks close it in too much. Let's see what it looks like with the rearview mirror. Yeah, you know, I'm going to have a surfboard there. I'm going to have all kinds of shit there, but I can I can see out the si uh, side views. Who needs rear view? But it might kind of make it, kind of give it a cool scaraby look to it. I'm going to go with this for a little while, cut and paste, and uh, see what it looks like. Okay. So I've got this general form here and I'm going to be trying to kind of make this into sections that I can weld right you know cut out a sheet metal and weld together so I guess I have to build it the way sheet metal would behave and I don't have English wheels to do a compound to angle so we need to get this curve down to this curve so, as Bad Chad would say, I'm going to have to shrink it. I'm going to have to shrink it. That's just what I have to do. i got to shrink it. So, how do we shrink it? So, I guess I'm going to slice it down the middle, overlap it, see how it lays, and continue the process down the line. I hope you're proud of me, Bad Chad. A little sloppy with uh, eyeball, but believe it or not, it's actually looking pretty good. So even if I get half of this right, I can I can 
use it as a template and just duplicate it. So now I'm kind of working more on getting half of it right, but I would like to see what the whole mock-up is. bad. You call that happy, as Bob Ross used to say. <laughs> now I'm mixing, mixing the old, real old school with new school. Whoopsie. As Bob Ross, Ross used to say, happy little accidents. Getting tired. I'm just not even working with metal. I'm working with cardboard. But this will save me a lot of time working with metal for sure. Now I'm just now I'm just playing. Pretty cool. And I'm thinking maybe we'll bring it down somehow down here and have it mold into our side shell. And it's just going to be a Frankenstein, I guess. I'll just do a piece at a time. But I'll get that back deck. It would be cool to get some bow in that back panel. But if I can't pull that off, you know, it's a homemade car. And uh, I think I can live with that even with that kind of angular bump. I like it better than just the rear deck. I think it's kind of neat. And like I said, if I can wrap this around, bring this down here to uh, meet the inner well that I'm doing, um, I think would look pretty, sh pretty schlick. Bring this up here and have it widen out and meet into, into there and hide all that. So that's the goal. See if I can pull it off. All right, boys and girls, you may remember when I first started cutting sheet metal, I tried these uh, this Bauer sheet metal shear uh, from Harbor Freight. And, um, hello there. I guess I should. All right, so, um, and it broke. This The bottom actual shear blade, the hardened blade broke. I was trying to uh, do the uh, the plates, which I thought were 18 or 16 gauge, turns out they were a lot thicker. So this is 16, this is 18 gauge. I'm gonna give it a whirl. It's a lot tougher for me. I don't wanna sit here and have to grind it. So I am going to try to um, see if this thing will cut 18 gauge. I guess I gotta tip my hat to these guys because this works. The nibble's pretty good. So here's the rough, rough cut, which ain't too rough. Yeah, that's pretty damn good. I'm gonna clean it up on the grinding wheel and I think it'll just about be ready to mount on the car. All right, have this uh, back piece fabricated, ready for welding. It, uh, we'll bring it down here and tack it. And we're gonna clean all this, strip all this, and this will be bent in and tacked to it. And I'll probably uh, tack through these holes too. So this is not body work, this is just structural stuff or, you know, semi-structure stuff, not really structural. So it just needs to be tacked and held firmly. You see we have the same amount of clearance on this side. We'll get that in there nice and smooth. And this will be our hump in the back. And then we will lay down our, our sheet metal slices and weld them together. You know, once everything is finished and I guess upholstered or whatever I'm gonna do, padding, some sort of padding or color coordinated paint or something like that. But, you know, like I said, I wanna get the damn thing on the road. So I don't wanna go too crazy with uh, 
the finishing touches. I just want to finish it, make it safe, and start driving the damn thing. So that's where I'm at. All right, I've got this uh, area here <clears throat> all prepped. This is where I, I um, drilled out the uh, spot welds for whatever was here. I'm not exactly sure what it was. Um, so I've ground them out. I'm gonna re-spot welds in there and of course weld around here. Uh, I've ground here where it's gonna make a bit of contact and I'm just gonna tack it. So I think I will grind a little bit in here because we can tack it on this side as well. I had those, um, those uh, rollover protection units that um, fit in those slots, these guys right here, and they were uh, covering up where I need to weld in there, but it's minimal. I mean, this is, I'm just tacking it down. It does not have to look pretty. All this is gonna be hidden, and I really don't want to uh, have any interference with those units. So I might just do a very minimal amount of spotting in here. joined as one. Well, Carl Galler builds welds. Uh, they look like chicken shit, but I get decent penetration and they hold. This is really a piece of bodywork, a support section that largely will not be seen. So I'm satisfied with it holding tight. Now onto the, the cowling section. All right, since this area is going to be essentially covered up um, forever, uh, I am going to spray these areas that I couldn't even get to with this rust reformer, which is designed um, kind of to turn um, rust or corrosion into, uh, or to at least stabilize it. All right, I'll have to just grind, grind that top edge. Overkill, I think, but that's kind of one of the things that I'm known for with uh, Carl Geller builds. Okay, so I've got the uh, car prepped for, um, welding in some sheet metal on the back. So this is my template. And I think for starters, I'm going to make it, uh, at least on the edges, I think I'm gonna make it a little bit big. Just to, I can always cut material off, but I think I'm gonna give myself about an inch uh, radius. Just 
lower profile gets a little squirrely right here, so I'm going to flip it over. Because I know that this edge laid very well on the car, and the other one I kind of cut too, too, uh, too skinny. But I think I'm going to try to introduce a little bit of a roll into it in the middle, which you'll require a little bit more material. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the front out exactly the way it is, but the sides I'm going to give just a little bit more meat here. I'm going to cut this right on the line-ish and um, cut this long. But I gotta say, second time around, I'm I'm enjoying the power shear because cutting this by hand, I mean, it's already saved me way over the fifty-four dollars, whatever it was, fifty-nine bucks, sixty bucks, and it has saved my hands from the dreaded arthritis. Favorites would say. That's Derek from Vice Grip Garage. I don't know. So we're 58 and three quarters. 58 and three quarters. So that's uh, 29. Is uh, 28 is uh, 56. 57, 29 is 58 and 3 sixteenths would be the halfway mark, 29 and 29 and 29 is 58 and 3 eighths is half of 58 and 3 quarters. Right? Right. So, I think what I'll do. some spaghetti. I guess the idea is to get it to the point where it'll lay down on that thing and then just start tacking it. So I'm going to try to get a little bit of roll in this. And I just don't, that's a compound and I just don't know if it's, if it's possible without beating the crap out of it with a, with a hammer and that's too much like body work. I just, I don't think I have the skill set to say. Spot it up. Spot up that top. That would be right there for the first weld. I'm gonna do it. So what am I gonna do? I'm just gonna do it. Thank you. 
And so far, tacking up this side a little bit more than that side has pulled pulled us out of alignment a little bit. So I'm hoping when I yank this up and over, it will straighten that all out. Wish me luck. Working it away, working it along. Trying to get everything to fit. And it did pretty much pull that back plate uh, centered for the most part. down onto here. I think the way we're going to do that is beat the crap out of it. See what we got here, folks. This pinched down pretty good. Got this tacked in pretty good. This one fought me a little bit more. I did a little bit more planishing, which I think translates to beating the shit out of. But nevertheless, it's down there now. And we will treat this one the same way as we treated the other one the other side and then we will start working our way over here so my la my best laid plans of cutting this in one piece and welding it in one uh, is not coming to fruition so we're going to need to shrink this as uh, bad Chad calls it so I'm going to be cutting up here and folding these down on each other and then uh, zipping it once I tack, cut and tack down these sides. I don't know if I'll need to do additional cuts, but I will if I need to. So I'll just start with the with the middle. I was hoping to avoid that because my uh, I'll have to stitch it all back up. With it. start from this outside and uh, work my way over to the middle so we'll have to tack her down bender tack her whatever we got to do laying down pretty good so Got a little bit of protection on my trunk lid. We've buttoned down our uh, rear cowling. I'm gonna even that out. Um, so the uh, funny thing is, is uh, anybody from Maryland can identify that classic shape from here to here. And it's just a coincidence, but being from Maryland, definitely looks like a blue crab to me. And uh, I don't want to do this, but how cool would it be to have crab claws coming down here on both sides? And it could look like a big old crab, but then it would look like a takeout seafood uh, delivery van. So <laughs> that's not what I'm looking for. All righty. Winding down the day, I got most of this crab shell installed. 
I'm gonna do a little bit of preliminary cleanup, but I'm gonna leave the rest for another day. All right, hey. All right, this is what we got for today. This is today's day's work. Got our Maryland blue crab shell. I mean, the symmetry, I worked out pretty damn well. And uh, as we creep around, we will meet somewhere in the middle here, but we'll bring this down here to look like a nice flow. I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, you know, I can't lie. Um, I'm thinking about getting somebody, something in here, either coming up through the through the, um, the trunk lid, the deck lid that's underneath it here, and maybe jacking that out in the middle with some sort of, I don't know, something. Uh, but um, the little concave, you know, we're definitely going to be doing some body putty, some bondo. I don't know that I want to put uh, a half an inch thick of bondo on there to to, to bubble that out, but uh, I'm uh, I'm not unhappy with the way that looks. I got to be honest. You know, it adds a little bit of finishing to it. I think it's cool. Better than just the deck lid. The uh, the back uh, headrest will rest over top on, on in front of that. Once again, the symmetry is pretty good, real good actually. So I'm gonna call this an episode, guys. Uh, did a lot of stuff for uh, the um, these kick panels on that side I'm gonna work I got kind of got bored with working on that one over there <laughs> so I stopped working on this one and I started working on this rear deck lid so I'll work my way around but anyway whoops uh, so that's an episode um, I really appreciate uh, you guys watching once again this is Carl Galler with Carl Galler builds uh, please like share subscribe and comment uh, I've been getting a whole lot of uh, really cool comments. Um, I am looking, currently looking for a uh, 10 to 12 foot um, vintage longboard uh, or a replica of a longboard. I mean, some people are freaking out at me. It's like, oh my God, you're gonna take a beautiful vintage longboard and bolt it on your ugly car. It's like, listen, it just looks cool. I mean, I'm not trying to make a statement other than building something that I'm happy with, so. Give me a fake longboard, you know, if it's cheaper than a real longboard. Anyway, 10, 12 feet, wide as possible. Carl Galler, Carl Galler Builds. Like, share, subscribe, comment. Uh, love you all, and I am out.